The little spacecraft that could, Voyager 2, is heading for its closest encounter yet with the planet Neptune. It's now billions of miles from Earth. Neptune is the eighth wonder of our solar system. No other celestial body comes close to this planet's cape when it comes to magnificence and startling features. However, Neptune's once happy storyline has taken a nosedive. There is something amiss going on in the ice giant, some astronomers had warned months back. Initially, scientists couldn't pinpoint what was wrong because we were more fascinated with the potential of life on the planet. The trouble had grown out of hand when we discovered the rot. And now scientists are having a hard time fixing this problem, especially with the distance of the planet from the Earth. What shocking discovery about Neptune has scientists all worried? Could this problem be associated with the rumored ocean world underneath Neptune? Or is the problem associated with Triton, Neptune's largest moon? Join us as we look into how something terrible is happening to Neptune in 2024, and no one knows why. Scientists have always been fascinated with Neptune and have tried their best to sail through the daunting waves of mystery surrounding the planet to learn new facts. For decades now, we have been studying this remarkable planet, and almost every other day we stumble upon a scintillating revelation that proves that there are still many hidden things waiting to be discovered in Neptune. It was the pursuit of these hidden wonders that led astronomers to the gates of a shocking new discovery. Something wrong is happening to Neptune. Scratch that. Something terrible is happening to the glittering icy planet, and scientists have been unable to get the image of the sad occurrence from their heads. However, we can't talk about this arising problem without first giving Neptune its flowers for being an amazing planet. If all the planets in the solar system were to converge for a family meeting, Neptune's presence would be the most intimidating. Even without saying a word, the planet has that effect on other neighboring planets and astronomers who constantly observe it. Holding the unshakable position of the eighth planet in the solar system, Neptune belongs to the family of giant planets. However, the planet was not satisfied with this grouping and decided to niche down to another subfamily known as ice giants. Neptune is an ice giant, and it shares this honor with its near twin, Uranus. In diameter, it is the fourth largest in the solar system. Another distinguishing feature is that it is the third most massive planet and the densest giant planet in our universe. When placed side by side, Neptune edges out Uranus by being slightly more massive. And if the Earth were to enter the competition, we would see that Neptune is 17 times the size of Earth. Although the average man would be shocked by this information, researchers have a different thought running through their minds. Many scientists have talked about the possibility of living in Neptune. The planet's large size means there is enough space for it to serve as an Earth colony if we ever confirm that it can support human life. While we meditate on this thought, we should mention that the planet's equatorial radius is 24,764 kilometers. This is nearly four times what is obtainable on Earth. Once again, Neptune proves that it's superior to our planet. Neptune continues on its winning streak by having a surface gravity of 1.14 times Earth's surface gravity. The only planet superior to it in this category is the famous Jupiter. Many scientists have confessed that exploring Neptune comes with a different kind of feeling. It is almost as if they are walking through El Dorado Island. This feeling is heightened by the fact that Neptune welcomes them into a new world that is so different from what we have on Earth. More so, it is impossible to have a glimpse of Neptune with the naked eye. In the early years of the planet's discovery, we had to make do with our imaginations and whatever results mathematical predictions gave us. However, over the years we have been able to peel little by little the layers of mystery enveloping this planet. This journey started on September 23, 1846, when Johann Galle first observed the giant planet using a telescope signaling the beginning of a series of observations. The turning point in our understanding of Neptune came in August 1989 when the Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by the planet. The space probe gave us a better picture of this remarkable planet and birthed new possibilities we never knew existed. 
We have been able to nitpick on some of these possibilities thanks to the arrival of advanced space equipment like the Hubble Space Telescope, HST, and the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. Although they are several kilometers away from the Earth, the HST and JWST have constantly sent back gifts in the form of data obtained from different space observations. Over the years, Neptune has regularly featured in these revered data that come in the form of images. When scientists looked at these images, they discovered something exciting about the internal structure of Neptune. They couldn't hold down their excitement at the realization that Neptune's internal structure is quite similar to Uranus. This means they have been right all along for calling Neptune, Uranus's twin. A second look at the observed data showed scientists that Neptune's atmosphere accounts for 5 to 10% of its mass and that the core of the planet is composed of iron, nickel, and silicates. Another surprising discovery in Neptune's atmosphere was methane. However, the kind of methane here is a bit different from what we have back in the Earth's atmosphere back on Earth. Scientists were shocked to see methane in increasing concentrations in the planet's atmosphere. The gas presence is supported by ammonia and water, and together, they can be found in the lower regions of the planet's atmosphere. If we were to glide through Neptune's atmosphere at higher altitudes, we would see that it is compared to 80% hydrogen, 19% helium, and a trace amount of methane up here. The wonder obtainable in Neptune's troposphere and stratosphere is nothing compared to the interesting facts scientists have uncovered about its climate. The planet is characterized by an extremely dynamic stormy weather system, with winds rising to speed of almost 600 meters per second, exceeding supersonic flow. Scientists have expressed their regrets about this particular finding because we cannot live in such weather conditions. It is a very dangerous environment for human life, especially considering the fact that the prevailing winds have speed variations ranging from 20 meters per second in the easterly direction to 325 meters per second in the westward direction. If, by a miracle, we find a solution to this natural phenomenon so we can live on Neptune, we can't ignore the fact that most of the winds on the planet move in a direction opposite the planet's rotation. This is another feather added to Neptune's cap. Scientists were still dazed by this finding when another discovery was dropped on their laps. Space observations have revealed that there is an insane amount of methane, ethane, and acetylene at Neptune's equator. Guess what? This is 10 to 100 times greater than at the poles. More so, Neptune is plagued by seasonal changes that have caused the cloud bands in the southern hemisphere to increase in size and albedo. Furthermore, researchers have admitted that there is a direct relation between the long orbital period of Neptune and why seasons often last 40 years. As of today, Neptune is the farthest planet in the solar system, and it maintains a very distant relationship with the Sun at a distance of 4.5 billion kilometers. Every 165 years, the planet completes its obligatory orbit around the Sun. It is obvious that the duo are not the best of friends. Despite the strained relationship between both parties, Neptune still receives energy from the Sun. However, the planet radiates twice as much energy as it receives from the Sun. This finding came as a shock to scientists as they have been unable to explain how a planet that lies over 50% farther from the Sun and receives only 40% of its amount of sunlight has sufficient internal energy to drive the fastest planetary winds in the solar system. They are further confused by the fact that Neptune is warmer than Uranus. Going by precedent, Uranus should be warmer due to its distance from the Sun. However, this is not the case, and we see evidence of this when we pay a quick visit to the upper regions of Neptune's troposphere. Here, the temperature can fall to 50.18 Kelvin. We will also see that at a depth where the atmospheric pressure is equal to one bar, the temperature is 72 Kelvin. If we decide to travel further down the deeper layers of gas, we will see that the temperature rises steadily. Scientists are yet to recover from the shock of Neptune being warmer than Uranus, despite being the farthest from the Sun. As they pondered the answer to these questions, they were hit by more shocking discoveries from Triton, Neptune's moon. In the world of natural satellites, Triton stands tall above other moons. It is the largest natural satellite in Neptune 
and the first to be discovered by scientists. Located at a distance of approximately 4.5 billion kilometers from the Sun, and a little less than 4.4 billion kilometers from our dear planet, Triton is so far away from us. This answers the question of why it is so difficult to observe Triton using telescopes from the Earth. However, the 1989 Voyager 2, flyby over the Moon and the use of ground-based and space telescopes, have provided us with enough paint to create a picture of this intriguing Moon world. Ever since Triton was discovered on October 10, 1846, by British astronomer William Lassell, scientists can't get enough of this enigma of a Moon. Almost everything about Triton is mystical, right from the fact that it is the only large moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit. In layman terms, Triton's orbit is in a direction opposite to its planet's rotation. This is so unbelievable. It is quite amusing that if Lassell hadn't used his 24-inch aperture telescope to gaze into space, it might have taken us more time to learn of the existence of this magnificent natural satellite. Likewise, we would have been limited in our understanding of this satellite and Neptune itself, if not for the emergence of sophisticated space observation instruments. The arrival of space telescopes made it possible to capture data about the mysterious satellite. Scientists had barely recovered from the shock of this peculiar feature when their investigation revealed that Triton was the seventh largest moon in the solar system at a diameter of 2,000 since the 110 kilometers. Named after the Greek sea god Triton, who is the son of Poseidon, the Greek god corresponding to the Roman Neptune, Triton is larger than the dwarf planets Pluto and Eris. Researchers find it interesting that Triton accounts for more than 95.5% of all the mass known to orbit Neptune. This also includes the planet's rings and 13 other known moons. At this junction, there is no disputing Triton's supremacy. For years now, Triton has remained on the lips of astronomers as it is one of the few moons in the solar system known to be geologically active. The other moons that fit this description are Jupiter's Io and Europa, as well as Saturn's Enceladus and Titan. While studying the moon's topography, researchers revealed that Triton is relatively flat. Another interesting fact is that its observed topography never varies beyond a kilometer. As if this is not enough, the moon is said to be characterized by blocky outcrops, ridges, troughs, furrows, hollows, plateaus, icy plains, and a few craters. It is almost like you are touring a magical land because there is so much to unpack with each turn. When astronomers poked around the recent data obtained from space observations, they couldn't believe what their eyes were showing them. Triton is an astronomical wonder. The moon has an uncommon atmosphere and a dynamic climate that rivals that of other natural satellites in the solar system. Scientists have revealed that if we were to observe the moon's ionosphere, we would see that it is filled with charged particles and is ten times more active than any other moon in the solar system. The age-long knowledge is that ionospheres are usually charged by solar energy. However, what scientists have been unable to understand is how Neptune and Triton have a charged ionosphere. If we recall, Neptune and Triton are far from the Sun, so what is charging its ionosphere? What is behind the mysterious energy source? This is one puzzle that astronomers hope to solve with the proposed future explorations of the Moon and its mother planet. Thanks to the images obtained by Voyager 2, we discovered that Triton had intricate cryovolcanic and tectonic crates. And this can only mean one thing. The planet has a complex geological history. One look at the images from this visit, and you would notice that impact craters are concentrated entirely in Triton's leading hemisphere. When the Voyager space probe flew by Triton in 1989, it wasted no time in measuring the surface temperature of the Moon and recording a value of 38 Kelvin. Furthermore, the spacecraft opened our eyes to a long, kept secret. Triton was home to active geysers, which erupted sublimated nitrogen gas. So far, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft that has traveled into the adventurous lands of Triton, and it achieved this from a distance of 40,000 kilometers. More so, it could only study 40% of the Moon's surface. Nevertheless, 
scientists have been able to crack the code when it comes to the age of Triton's surface. The moon's surface is relatively young. If we are to go by the evidence provided by the Voyager, we have regions varying from an estimated 50 million years old to just an estimated 6 million years old. The most exciting information recovered from Voyager's visit is how Triton has a surface of mostly frozen nitrogen, a mostly water ice crust, an icy mantle, and a substantial core of rock and metal. This core makes up two-thirds of its total mass and has a mean density of 2.061 gram per centimeter cube, which reflects a composition of approximately 15 to 35 percent water ice. This explains why scientists often call Triton an ocean world. From the observations made so far, astronomers believe that there is an ocean world underneath the icy layers of Triton. Currently, all the evidence from previous observations of Triton points in only one direction. There is an ocean of super hot water under the planet's cold clouds. Although they are yet to lay their hands on indisputable evidence, scientists have been holding on to the dream that Triton Neptune houses large oceans just like the Earth. If this turns out to be a reality at the end of the day, then it means that some scientists were right to speculate that Neptune holds the potential for life. Astronomers have hypothesized that the icy plumes can be traced back to water from the interior being forced through the moon's thick crust. If we were to confirm that a subsurface ocean was the source of Triton's icy plumes, this would be a big win for the scientific community. This is because it would expand scientists' understanding of where water could be found beyond the Earth. We are on the verge of unlocking a new door when it comes to hydrological research. Furthermore, scientists are thrilled about the current pace of these investigations because past data have shown that there is a high possibility that the water in Neptune and even Uranus are rich in magnesium. If this turns out to be a reality, we have struck gold when it comes to research. The presence of an ocean world in Neptune means that we can always use these ocean resources to study the electric and thermal processes occurring on Neptune and its twin, Uranus. It is a win for us. Another reason astronomers are strongly convinced that Triton is an ocean world is that the plumes are similar to that of Saturn's Enceladus moon. The latter has become famous for being an ocean world. Researchers are resolute in their opinion that this similarity cannot be a mere coincidence and that if we decide to pursue this clue, we just might end up smiling. Since we are speaking about pursuing leads, it would interest you to know that NASA is on the verge of launching a new mission to explore Triton. We can recall that the last time a spacecraft stepped foot within the borders of Triton was in 1989. That's over three decades, and it is a unanimous opinion that a new visit is long overdue. This is why NASA has hit the ground running with the Neptune Odyssey mission. NASA engineers are cooking up another engineering masterpiece named Neptune Odyssey. There is excitement across NASA's offices at the sheer thought of what this mission will achieve. As the name suggests, this orbiter mission has a well-defined objective, which can be interpreted in one phrase, conquer Neptune. Neptune Odyssey is about to end our decades-long habit of observing Neptune and Triton from afar. For a long time now, we haven't had a close observation of the ice giant planet and its massive moon. This story is being written thanks to the genius minds developing the Neptune Odyssey spacecraft. These brilliant minds can be found at the Applied Physics Laboratory of John Hopkins University, NASA's long-running partner in the art of birthing amazing spacecraft. The design team has been charged with the mandate that the orbiter will be used to study Neptune and its moons, especially its golden goo sea Triton. Based on the current design timeline, NASA has set 2033 as the launch date for the orbiter. The orbiter is expected to leave our planet for Neptune with the aid of NASA's famous space launch system. Nevertheless, if we consider trajectories using gravity assist at Jupiter, the launch date will be 2031, and not the other way around. Whatever date NASA ends up with, we should rest assured that the spacecraft will arrive at Neptune by 2049. Although 16 years is a whole lot of time to embark on space travel, the mission is worth every moment or penny spent on the project. Moreover, 
Let's not forget that the average distance between the planet and the sun is 4.5 billion kilometers, and that it completes an orbit on average every 164.79 years. As soon as the Neptune Odyssey arrives at Neptune and switches to a retrograde orbit, we will hopefully solve the puzzle of whether Triton is an ocean world or not. Moreover, this mission will help us uncover the mystery behind the unique nature of the Moon's atmosphere. Another interesting mystery we hope this mission unravels is how the interiors and atmospheres of ice giant planets form and evolve. Let's keep our fingers crossed until scientists finally make these findings. We would be making a mistake if we think all is rosy at Neptune. If we ignore all the exciting discoveries from Neptune, we would see that there is a troubling issue burning underneath the surface. Recently, scientists discovered something strange from one of their space observations. When they investigated the data further, they got an answer they didn't like. Neptune was plagued by another storm, which has refused to disappear. We say, another, because this is not the first time we will be seeing storms on the planet. The 1989 Voyager 2 visit was our first introduction to the chilling nature of these storms. Imagine the surprise on scientists' faces when they learned about the Great Dark Spot, an anti-cyclonic storm system that spanned 13,000 by 6,600 kilometers lying in Neptune. On closer look at the images obtained from the probe's observations, we saw that the storm resembled the Great Red Spot of Jupiter. Although the storm was no longer visible when we observed it years later, Using the Hubble telescope, it seems to have reincarnated as a mysterious dark spot. The presence of these dark spots on Neptune has troubled scientists because they can't pinpoint the origin of these spots, and they are hoping that the planned Odyssey mission will help answer questions on their chemical composition and source. In the meantime, we can only continue to monitor the spots and hope they don't metamorphose into something that would harm Neptune. Thanks for watching this video till the end. For more explosive content about our universe, click the next video on your screen.